After introducing the basic things, let's uh, look at the working mechanism of OSPF. By which steps does the OSPF protocol finally uh, achieves the routing calculation? Actually, they have a lot of stage. Uh, before introducing the detailed stage, let's first differentiate between two relationships. We know that the routers should communicate with the neighboring router. And actually, there are two important concepts between the OFPF routers. So one is neighbor relationship. Another one is adjacency. If two routers can directly connect it, and they have interconnected interface, which means that they have a link connected with each other. And then uh, the router can send out the hello packet and the other router can receive it and send back the hello packet. After the discovery, after the uh, transmission of hello packet, the relationship of neighbor relationship has been set up. So this is easy set up relationship. But if they want to achieve the, the adjacency, that would be much more complex because after neighbor relationship, they should do a lot of things. For example, they should transmit a lot of packets and to exchange the information in the link state database until they achieve the adjacency. So the adjacency means that the database on the two routers are synchronized with each other. They keep the same information of the network topology. Okay, now let's look at the detailed process of how to establish an OSPF adjacency. Roughly speaking, they are divided into five steps. So we will introduce them one by one. Okay, so first of all, they need to set up the neighbor relationship. And that is easy. So actually, the router can send out a hello packet. He said that, hello, I am router one, and I don't know who is on my link. Then the router two will answer, hello, I'm two. I find my neighbor who is one. And then the one find that, OK, two is my neighbor. And then I can add this router into my neighbor list, and I will send Back acknowledgement so tell him that okay I am your neighbor and after receive this packet R2 has know that okay I have a neighbor of R1 so after this three-way handshake actually they have agreed on each other they know they are neighbors they can have this neighbor relationship and add each other on the neighbor table then let's look at the step two. Actually, step two is that they should exchange the DD packet. So the DD means the database description. So this router one will set that I am master and my router ID is one. After receive this message, router two find that I have larger ID than you. So I am the master. So how to decide which one is master, actually they decide that according to who has the larger ID. So this one has larger ID. So he sent back, I am the master and my router ID is larger than you. Then he knows, okay, I can only be the slave. And then he sent out a database description message. And in this message, the LSAs in the database are summarized. So after these two DD message exchange, both routers R1 and R2 change from the state of EX start into the state of exchange. And then the router 2 receives the DD and then he will send back his summary of his database. And then this one will check whether they are the same. If they are not the same, he will ask for the difference. So until here, they know that R1 knows what is contained in R2's database. And R2 knows what is maintained in R1's database. So here, pay attention to what is 
the summary of LSA. That is only a description, a summary, but not the detailed information. If they want to get the detailed information, they need the step four. So actually on step four, the LSR will, the R1 will say that, okay, I want to request the complete information about certain LSA. So here, why does he want to ask for, uh, for, for example, number 10 LSA? Because he finds that this router has that information, but itself has no information about that LSA. So he wants to synchronize with the database in R2. So he will ask for several uh, link state. So this is the link state request. He wants to request several link state information, which he doesn't know, he doesn't have. And then R2 will check all these informations and send back to the router one. After receive the information, the router one should acknowledge the receipt of this link state. And finally, so after this process, R1 will have all the information in R2. And similarly, R2 will also request so that R2 can have the same information with R1. So after these two site exchange, then all the, both of these routers have, uh, have the full information. So R1 and R2's LSDB, the database of link state information is synchronized. Okay. So that's all for the synchronization of the neighbors. And also if they are synchronized, so this is a review of the OFPF neighbor table, right? We have just now uh, look at that. For our router one, the neighbor table is like this. He has one neighbor, which is router two. And you can see that the router ID is two. The address is this one the address of the interface, and the state is full. Previously, the state is not full, right? And the mode is that neighbor is master. So this one is master, and the designated router is itself, and the backup designated router is its neighbor. And they have the dead time due to 35 seconds. So after 35 seconds, the uh, neighbor relationship will delete it. The retransmission timer interval is the retransmission time at which the LSA are retransmitted. So for example, if the LS acknowledgement is not received within five seconds, then the LSA will be retransmitted. Yeah, so that's the main information included in this OSPF neighbor table.